My name is John Lafada. I'm the chief engineer for the M-Razor Alpha, and this is the newest capability that we are providing to the Marine Corps and U.S. SOCOM under the LTATV and ULTV contract. Our capabilities provide light tactical maneuverability in austere environments with the ability to carry four people plus an additional payload on the vehicle. Inside of Polaris overall, we have on-road and off-road vehicles, so we do motorcycles to include Indian motorcycle and the slingshot vehicle. And we also do snowmobiles. Uh, for the snow terrain, we do ATVs and we do side-by-sides, uh, Ranger, Razor, and Sportsman, and General. So what you see here is the, the occupant enclosure package for the M-Razor Alpha. So it provides occupant enclosure and occupant protection, not only the cold weather environment, but for any austere environment, it can be utilized to protect the occupants. It includes the four doors, a roof, windshield, and rear panel also includes a windshield wiper and a heater defroster for the interior cabin. Everything from a mobility perspective is maintained with the vehicle and it provides a modularity capability to the vehicle. You can run this without the upper poly windows on the doors, you can run it without the doors, you can run it with just a windshield roof and rear panel. There's a multitude of ways that you can get this vehicle out depending on the environment you're operating in. Everything internally maintains the same capabilities as the base truck. With the cab also goes in conjunction the Arctic Mobility Kit which includes a set of tracks that can, be, that can replace the wheels on the vehicle to improve over snow capabilities. So the cab and the tracks work together in an opportunity to use a modular system with the base vehicle to provide different solutions depending on the environment you're operating in. You can run the tracks without the cab, with the cab, you can run the cab with and without the tracks and different configurations depending to fit your austere environment that you're operating in. It takes about two hours uh, in a two-man team to swap all four wheels to the track system on the vehicle. The tracks provide a lower ground contact pressure which is ideal for operating in sand, snow, and tundra type environments where the lower ground contact pressure allows you to float across the terrain and crawl across that terrain versus the tires which are going to have a higher ground contact pressure and it's going to cause you to eat into that terrain and make it more difficult to be mobile across that, that type of environment. Each wheel gets replaced with, with a single track system that has a larger contact area. So if you look at the footprint of the track itself, it's a larger ground contact area, which is what allows us to reduce that ground contact pressure and provide ideal mobility across an over snow condition. Yes, this is the new Ranger XP Kinetic. So it's a fully electric Ranger vehicle based off of the Ranger XP 1000 platform, which is our flagship utility vehicle inside of Polaris, and this gives a full electric capability to our customers. So it still maintains the same payload capability of 1,250 pounds on the vehicle, a towing capacity of 2,500 pounds, with the highest mileage capability on the vehicle is up to 80 miles of range with the electric capability. It's a 110 horsepower electric motor with 140 foot-pounds of torque. So from a vehicle performance standpoint, it's equal to what the XP1000 gas vehicle is. So 1250 is the same capability that the base Ranger has. This vehicle is ready for production. Orders have been acquired for it and we're working on the production side of, of this vehicle. So Textron Systems is a defense company. We have capabilities that uh, we provide for across all of the different domains. So from our Aerosan system, to our RCV, our robotic combat vehicle, to weapon systems, to our Navy systems. But today we have behind us the M3 technology demonstrator. So of course uh, about 18 months ago we delivered four M5 ripsaw vehicles to the Army under the RCV medium program. So a little bit smaller form factor, but part of what we've done is focused on some of the challenges that the Army has with crossing wet gaps uh, and size for transportability, and so it's a little bit smaller. And then today we switched that out for a 2.75 rocket launcher. The system behind us uh, has an advanced suspension system, and of course when you start talking about a vehicle uh, that doesn't have a crew, uh, you have to have a measure of resiliency in the suspension uh, in order for it to continue to, to operate on the field. Secondarily, this particular system, as we started to look at the challenges of crossing wet gaps, we looked at how do we accomplish that. And so you see in the video playing behind me photographs where we've actually submerged uh, this system for up to seven days uh, and then drove it out of the water. We, and it also, not only does it uh, submerge uh, and operate underwater, but it also can swim. And so we have uh, stern thrusters on the back 
uh, that are the same types of uh, system that we use on our advanced reconnaissance vehicle for the Marine Corps, and that allows it to navigate waterways to get from shore to shore. With almost 85 feet of deck space, it's actually about the same size on top as the M5 is, and that gives us the opportunity to put multiple payloads on it, which makes it kind of the Swiss Army knife for the U.S. Army. Very easy to integrate those systems. So here we have our close terrain shaping obstacle, or as the program is called by the U.S. Army, this is the XM-204. The system itself is contained in this 86-pound carrying case, and then it incorporates both seismic and acoustic sensors. Those sensors then detect enemy heavy armored vehicles. Once it's detected, the system fires a rocket. That rocket goes up uh, to a certain height. It searches a, a track area and then fires explosive floor and penetrator down through the top of the engine compartment. My name is Wayne Prender. I'm the Senior Vice President for Air Systems. What you see here is our Aerosan UAS. Aerosan has been operational for a large number of years. We have over 580,000 hours of operations, most of which are in combat. Currently support SOCOM and the Navy on fee-for-service operations where we do a variety of missions, both land and maritime, using EO, IR, SIGINT, EW, and payloads depending on the mission needs of the day. This configuration right here is a hybrid quad, which means it's a vertical take off and recovery. So it vertically takes off, transitions into forward flight, and then when it's time to land, it comes back and transitions down. This system right here is purpose-built for the Army's future tactical UAS requirement, increment two. This product specifically is differentiated by that we've fully embraced heavy fuel technology. We're one of the few companies that have actually fielded and operate with a heavy fuel engine. Again, 580,000 flight hours, all heavy fuel based. So we've scaled that up and that's going to allow the Army simplified logistics as well as the ability to use the same fuel at any of its locations. Uh, we're payload agnostic and all uh, fully open system architecture, which is going to allow the Army to continue to produce uh, and inject new capabilities and technologies as the system grows and matures. The engine is 11 horsepower, heavy fuel engine. In terms of payload capacity, it's a very open system. So uh, we have the ability to flex in new payloads as the system needs, and that configuration is going to allow uh, the system to operate however the users need. As you can imagine with the ongoing competition right now, there are certain things that we want to uh, keep under our hood, so to say, until it's time to unveil those.